joining us. It's uh, uh, Friday uh, the 28th of May. I hope you're well and that uh, you and your families and your friends and your neighbours are, are surviving um, our continued lockdown. Although I think we, we feel there's there's hope for a slightly different future um, now in the offing. So we're reading Acts of the Apostles, Season of Eastertide, taking time each day to reflect upon the scriptures taken from Acts of the Apostles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, we are praying fervently these days, particularly since this Feast of Ascension, for the gifts of your Spirit, because it's the Spirit that empowers the mission of the Church. So empower us, we pray, as your disciples, and give us courage and strength and perseverance for that to which you call us. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, yesterday we heard about Paul uh, speaking, first of all, to the crowd in Jerusalem, requiring uh, a rescue from the, the governor and the soldiers, um, appealing then for justice, for due process, appearing before the Sanhedrin and managing to cause uproar there too. So the Tribune and the soldiers rescue him from the Sanhedrin um, and take him and lock him in prison. Um, there to have a think about what they're going to do with him. So, uh, in the meantime, before today's scripture reading, uh, there's another sort of chapter and a half. So Paul um, is is in prison, um, and we're told of a plot by the Jews. Um, they they bound themselves to to fast until they can get this problem sorted out. They know that. Um, the tribune is going to bring Paul back down into the Sanhedrin once things have calmed down slightly uh, to further examine him because he, he's, a, he's told the tribune he's a Roman citizen which uh, made the tribune think seriously about what he was doing because he was going to scourge him to find to get him to confess to his crimes um, of course not allowed to do that to Roman citizens particularly um, they enjoy the, the, the protection of the empire and, the, and its army so uh, a close shave for the tribune, he got himself into serious trouble. So uh, he's going to allow him further due process, but um, there is this plot by the Jews. They're going to ambush Paul when uh, when he's on his way down from the Antonia Fortress, where the garrison is, uh, to the uh, to the actual uh, Sanhedrin meeting room. Um, so Paul's sister uh, has a son, and he is involved in some way in in in, in uh, serving and he overhears of the plot so he goes to tell paul paul sends him to the centurion the centurion tells the governor and the governor says right this guy's a roman citizen he's about to be assassinated on his way to trial and um, can't allow that to happen so in the middle of the night he he sends a, a large party of both uh, mounted troops and 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 an escort um, walking, I mean a large number of troops, um, improbably large in fact, to escort Paul down to the Roman garrison town of Caesarea, uh, Caesarea Maritima. You will remember we averted to that yesterday, and we were filling in the background colour. So Paul is spirited away. Uh, it's a great story in the middle of the night with a, an armed escort, uh, so that he doesn't get assassinated on on the way to the to the Sanhedrin the following day. So um, he successfully gets to Caesarea and he, he just goes into the prison there and usually the, the governor is not too hurried to get these things dealt with but um, he knows that there's things going on in the background so he, he decides to, uh, to try Paul uh, and Paul begins to talk in his own defence. The, the, the governor there, Festus, um, has guests, um, a King Agrippa and Bernice, his, his wife, and uh, one of the things he, the, the, the governors do is that if there's a, a wise person visiting a, another ruler or potentate that also has to judge cases, they sometimes, if there are tricky cases, they, they get the defendant out of prison and, and they say, what do you think about this one? I've got this guy to do with. What, what's your thoughts on it? So it's about uh, uh, knowledge. So today's scripture reading is about that. So we've had all that background and now we're going to have 
um, Festus, the governor in Caesarea Maritima, presenting him to the visiting dignitaries, King Agrippa and Bernice. From the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea and paid their respects to Festus. Their visit lasted several days and Festus decided to put Paul's case before the king. There is a man here, he said, whom Felix left behind in custody, and while I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid information against him, demanding his condemnation. But I told them that Romans are not in the habit of surrendering any man until the accused confronts his accusers and is given the opportunity to defend himself against the charge. So, they came here with me, and I wasted no time, but took my seat on the tribunal the very next day, and had the man brought in. When confronted with him, the accusers did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected, but they had some argument or other with him about their own religion, and about a dead man called Jesus, whom Paul alleged to be alive. Not feeling qualified to deal with questions of this sort, I asked him if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem to be tried there on this issue. But Paul put in an appeal for his case to be reserved for the judgment of the August Emperor. So I ordered him to be remanded until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, when Paul arrives in Caesarea, Felix is the governor, puts him in custody. But when Festus is appointed, he's wanting to be efficient and clear up the backlog. So he says he wastes no time and he brings the Jewish accusers in and confronts Paul. He says this is justice, of course. And uh, now he's putting the case to, um, to King Agrippa and Bernice to see what they have to say. Uh, and of course, we're not going to find out what they have to say. This is just really a, a narrative foil in order to present the, the story to us again. And the key is, as, as you would expect the key to be, um, this uh, is an argument, they said, about a dead man called Jesus, whom Paul alleges to be alive. So there's there's the nub, there's the, there's the key, this is what it's about, it's about the resurrection, it's about Jesus alive. So all, all this, if you like, is, is window dressing, it's just narrative context in order for us to be reminded that the reason all these things are going on is that Jesus is risen from the dead and that Paul is, is giving witness and testimony to that. So, um, it, it's just to see where the emphasis lies because there's so much going on, it'd be so easy to be distracted. But, you know, the, again, the content of the speech is so key in Acts and, and, and so important uh, for, for communicating what we're actually about and what we're trying to trying to get uh, into the head and trying to maintain. So it's about Jesus being alive and Paul's testimony to that. So being a, a Roman citizen, he's fed up languishing in jail. So he uh, has a, a appealed to the emperor himself. So Paul will have to go to Rome. So you've borne witness for me here, you shall do so also in Rome. And uh, what, uh, what Festus has to do then is get safe passage for Paul on a ship to Rome, um, which he'll do in due course. Uh, and we've only got tomorrow, the last day uh, of our reading of Acts, uh, to hear about that. So I hope you can join us then. Let's end with our prayer to St. Rock. O oh, blessed St. Rock, patron of those afflicted by plague, have pity on those who lie upon a bed of suffering. Your power was so great when you were in this world that by the sign of the cross many were healed of their diseases. Now that you are in heaven, your power is not less. Offer then to God our hopes and prayers, and obtain for us all the health we seek. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Rock, pray for us that we may be preserved from all diseases of body and soul. Well, so thank you again for joining us for our reflection on the scriptures. I hope you find them helpful. Um, it's been fun. Um, I hope you together with your family, your friends, your neighbours are well. Please remember in prayer, asking the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God, and of course St. Rock, those who are sick, those who care for them, and all who uh, seek to help and support us. And please, together with your family, your friends, take care. And thanks for joining us. Have a good day. Bye-bye.